Now let's take a look a little bit more at uh, some of the ways to select a curve and uh, some of the pitfalls you might want to avoid. Uh, so let's say, for instance, I'm, I'm drawing, um, I don't know, maybe it's going to be a caterpillar, so some sort of a wavy line here, giving it a, a starting size, and we'll keep that all across. So we have two curves to work with. Um, if you right-click outside of it, uh, it will likely deselect your object. So let's say you need to go and work on some of these shapes, perhaps a little bit more of a bump up here. You're going to need to reselect that part, and you can do that right up here in the groups area which will select the part, um, it will probably select a curve, but do you know which one it is? Not really sure. It probably is the one in the middle here, but to be absolutely sure which one it is that you're working on, and you look at the curve, uh, the, the cursor, it's indicating that you can basically add another curve. So when you do that, um, you've just created that third curve, right? The third line on the line creation tool. If you make it small, it will make it pointy towards the end. Um, so it, it wasn't actually selecting that curve to modify it. And so what you need to do is right click on that. And as you get close to it, you'll be able to select it. Then the cursor changes to that tool that allows you to redraw, redraw the whole curve actually, if you want to, right? So you can go like this and say, I, did, I needed a different type of curve. If you want that to be a straight line, there is a curve here, uh, a curve menu, and you can say, make this a straight line. Okay. Or you're, you can still modify it like this. Uh, maybe you want to do just details to that, okay? So you can edit, you can modify, you can do all sorts of things with that. Um, now, as far as selecting it, once you're done with this line and you want to go, go to the other curve, you just right-click on that one, and it will turn yellow. The one in the middle may not, it may show blue. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, the other curves that may define that object will probably take a different shape. So if you now have that one selected, different color, uh, yellow, you can make it a different size and the whole shape will change accordingly. So the trick here is to know how to um, select it. Use the right button to select a different curve. And when you're done with that curve, as you click outside with the right button, it will deselect the curve, but the object is still selected, right? And then you click, uh, right click again, it will deselect the object. So you have two levels of selections. You can select the object and you can select the curve or one of the curves inside that object uh, by doing a, a second selection on it. Uh, you got to get the cursor close to that curve though, otherwise it doesn't know which one you're looking for. Okay. Now once you've selected a curve, you can do all sorts of things with it. You can go, for instance, here to the widget move tool and uh, do some sort of changes to the elements that defined the currently selected curve. And you can do these changes in different ways. So you see right now the scale is very high. So uh, if I select a point, not only that point moves, but the whole range of points in the neighborhood of that curve will also move. You see the curve kind of yellow and then kind of fading to red towards the edge to indicate how severe that effect is, if I, how close it is. If I trim it down to a very small curve, a, sm a small scale, then only smaller parts of that curve will be subject to my to, to the influence of that moving cursor here. And so with that, you can do very fine-tuned details. Um, it's still a bell curve, though, as far as like how that influence is. And if you want it very tight to a small, just a point or two, you can do that too. And then, of course, you get these very spiky looks. Uh, if that's too spiky, you can use the S, as in Smooth tool, and that will smooth your curve again. That's a, a tool you can always use uh, whenever your curve is selected. By the way, if you ever have difficulty selecting a curve, uh, let me go outside of that to show you an example. Uh, it may be that you have, that you're currently in what's called posing mode. If you accidentally hit the U key, U for, you know, like in other programs like Project Dog Ruffle, it might be U for undo as a single key shortcut. So if you do that, you may wonder how come you can select the part, but you can no longer select the curve. Right? I mean, I'm able to select the part and it shows me the curves, but then when I'm selecting this one here, it doesn't turn yellow. In fact, it deselects the object. That's because you're currently not in an editing mode, you're in a posing mode. So just keep that in mind. If you ever see that problem, you're, you may have the posing mode or some other modes selected that you didn't realize or didn't want. So hit U for undo and you're back into editing mode where you can, or at least non-posing mode, where you can indeed select the curve and make changes to them.